All right. So if you're trying to troubleshoot your E30 or E21, whatever, and you've researched for a while, you're trying to figure out why your car isn't running, it's stuttering, it's it's you know, it won't idle right, whatever. You've probably come across a couple forums saying something about the C191 port. And basically that's a port that's underneath your throttle body that gets water in it, it gets corroded, it, it doesn't work right. And basically, I did a bunch of work to my intake, I changed my injectors, I changed my intake boot, and I thought it was vacuum lines or a vacuum leak or something from that. But I think I've realized that my C1E port, I don't know if you can see it right here. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. But basically, that thing did not want to come off. I had to pull with all of my might to get that thing off. When I finally got it off, it was all corroded. And it, it looked like an old penny or the Statue of Liberty. It wasn't good. And basically, I just kind of sprayed some brake cleaner on it and stuck it back on there. And uh, obviously, that didn't work. But basically, in my case at least, the car will run perfectly fine for one second. And then while you're driving down the road, that red check engine light, the one to the left of the orange one will come on. It'll flash for like two seconds and you'll lose all power. And then it'll turn back off and the power's back again. So the engine will either run perfectly fine or not at all. Whenever something runs perfectly fine or not at all, then that leads me to believe that there's a bad connection somewhere. And, you know, I thought about it. I was trying to figure out what connections it could be. You know, you've got the temperature sensor here and the injector power connector there. And it's like, well, those look fine. It can't be those. And I've come to the conclusion that I'm pretty much 99.8% sure that is the C191 port. And BMW actually doesn't make a replacement for these. You have to buy like a generic connector or something, splice it and make your own connector. The only thing that you can do besides that is buy a whole wiring harness and fuck that. All right, so with the intake boot off, you can see right here, that is it. Right there. And that's what I'm gonna try to take off. Now, if it's any harder, or it won't be harder, but it's gonna be a bitch to get off. I guarantee it. Basically, you have to take the bottom part and you have to like twist it to unlock it. I can't do it with one hand, so I can't really show you, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You just grab the top and turn it uh, counterclockwise, I'm pretty sure. So I finally got it off. It fought me every step of the way, because of course it did. And basically, this is it. It's got those pins in there. They're all corroded and gross and green. And the female connection down here does not look much better. Like I said, I just kind of put some brake cleaner in there, sprayed it, and just hoped for the best, and the best did not happen. So, the biggest issue with this is going to be access. Because it's not easy to get to this stuff, especially down here. Because you can't really do anything with this down here. You can't pull it out more, you can't really... You can't feed it through another way because it's all attached to the wiring harness and the wire harness attached to this. And it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm going to try to detach the wiring harness up here to get it out more because trying to work with those things down in there is just going to be a massive bitch. All right, so I've been hitting this thing with some 80 grit sandpaper for a while now. And as you can see, uh... Yeah, it's looking kind of rough. So, basically, there's something sticky coming off on the sandpaper. And that's probably why it was not easy to take off. Um, but it does look a lot better now that I've sanded it off. Um, I was going to put some sandpaper into the female connector as well. But I don't want to spread out, like, I guess the terminals that these pins will go into. Because that will make the problem even worse. 
make the connection even worse. But basically, I'm just trying to fix it in the meantime so that maybe I can drive the car for a while before I put the new connector on it. And this will also confirm my, cons my suspicions that this is actually the problem. I'm pretty sure this is the problem, but in case it's not, I'm gonna try to sand this down and clean it up and make this connector work. That's not a good start. It is idling. I'm gonna take my trusty hood opener 9000 with me in case I need to pop the hood. So these are the connectors I'm gonna attempt to use. Uh, I got them on Amazon. I think I paid like maybe $15 for them. Um, no, these are the six pin connectors. These are the ones I'm gonna be using. Um, from what I can tell, you just kinda put the wires into these little metal clip things and the male metal clip things plug into the female metal clip things and then boom, you're done. Magic, car runs. Okay, I have encountered an oddity. So, the female plug wires, there are five of. Male plug wires, there are six of. And I did not rip any off as I was taking it off. At least I don't think I did. And so, the car has been running without one of these wires being plugged into anything. So, I'm just not gonna bother. Not that I could bother, because it's gone. So, I've been working on these wires for a little while with this kit, and I've pretty much got it all done. I've just gotta put the connector on it. So you've got these little pin things that you just, or you're supposed to use this little tool. I lost it, I don't know, it was like this little plastic crimping tool. It sucked, so I've just been using pliers. Uh, but it's got these little, uh, like waterproof nipple things that you put on before you put these on and you know it's supposed to like stop water from getting and I'm still gonna tape it up but these will most likely help anyway all right so I've been stripping these bottom most wires and they've oxidized and turned black not this one but this one right here um, I've I already sanded this one I've been taking some sandpaper and sanding the black off of these wires you probably can't tell but that one right there that that's black. Um, just taking some sandpaper, sanding the black off. Okay, so these connectors, they suck. They're ugly and they smell. <sighs> so, basically I tried using these connectors. I tried, you know, for hours, at least three hours to try to get this thing on. And uh, I couldn't make it work, so uh, I just ripped it off, threw it on the ground, and I'm buying a better one. Uh, it should be here in about a week, something like that. But those suck. Don't buy them. So I'm taping them together right now. And I also discovered the day that I am a grade A idiot. Because I thought, you know, I put it together, I taped it all up, and it wasn't running right. And the temperature gauge wasn't working and I figured oh it must be the missing wire and so I cut the part of the wiring harness back here in trying to find like where I might have ripped the old wire off from it being rotten or something and I didn't find it obviously I ran it back all the way back here didn't find it it's like oh shit where is this wire at and so I was stumped I was looking around I was hoping that it wasn't even farther back into the wiring harness. Maybe it was broken, ripped out. Um, and I got to Googling and I found a forum of somebody doing this. And apparently this wire doesn't go anywhere. It just doesn't do anything. So I did all that for nothing. Um, Google before you act is the moral of the story. But I'm pretty sure the reason the temperature gauge isn't working is because I just didn't tape one of these up well. So I'm gonna take them back apart and redo them. So this connector, I got it on eBay. It was like $20, something like that. The big difference with this one is the wires are already 
inside the connector so I don't have to fool with trying to do it in there with no room. The wires are already plugged in. So I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter than what they are right now. They're a little bit long, but this is definitely a higher quality connector. And instead of soldering by hand, because I don't want to bother with that either, I got these self-soldering little connectors here that I'm going to use to connect the connector to the old wires. And then I can be done. I don't want to do this shit anymore. This is getting stupid. Oh yeah. I've lost track of time. The days have started to run together. I have no idea how long I've been out here. I'm gonna guess about an hour though. So, yeah, this was, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's together. Yeah, there's not much else to say. I just cut the wires and, uh, stuck them on there and melted them. Pretty satisfying to be honest. So there's the finished product. I got it all taped up down here. Hopefully, um, there's no bad connections and I just taped all that up for no reason. I'm gonna put all the intake on and then I have to take it back off again because that wouldn't be good. <laughs> all right, here we go. Do a roar. Do it. I know the issue. It doesn't run very well without these. Yes! Yes! Yeah! So there we go. Problem solved. Um, should it be easier than it was for me? Definitely. Don't buy cheap China shit. And, uh, Pretty much it, you know. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the connector I used. It's a pretty good quality connector, not gonna lie. Kind of expensive though, but I'd, I'd say it's worth it. But yeah, I'm gonna make more videos on this soon. I've got a little coolant leak right here. I'm gonna replace this housing. Don't know if that's worth making a video on or not. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I'll... yeah. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> ah!